We begin our story approximately 27 hours, 33 minutes, and 11 seconds before the murder. Scarlett Adler, whose file has been um, redacted due to concerns for my safety, sits at the bar in her nightclub, anticipating a visitor. As if on cue, Scott Blumhover, is that really his name? Yeah. <laughs> Scott stumbles in, looking as though he'd rather be anywhere else in the world than here. taking her last name. And why not? It's a rather impressive name with quite a bit of respect behind it. Well, it's not respect. It's fear. Well, the two are not mutually exclusive. For example, people respect me because I put the fear of God into them. Vodka? Miss Adler. Uh, please, please. Call me Scarlet. Uh, Scarlet, it's nine in the morning and you're already drinking? I am afraid day drinking is one of my vices, though so it can hardly be called that, considering what, well, considering what the other ones are. Oh, I may have made a mistake. Oh, don't worry, Scott. My vices don't include biting the hand that feeds me. Now, what is it you wanted me to uh, take care of? Henry Northcott. Hmm. Uh, you want me to kill Henry Northcott? Oh, no, not kill him. Then, uh, I don't even think that's possible. Then what does, then what does take care of him mean exactly? Not kill him? If you were to kill him, then I could be charged with solicitation of murder. And jail would definitely prevent me from marrying Jenna. Ah, uh, you want to marry Jenna Northcott? Uh, yes, I do. And Mr. Northcott does not want me to marry Jenna. In fact, he's threatened my life several times unless I call off the engagement. So, call off the engagement? With a face like yours? Well, I'm sure you'll have hundreds of women just tearing their tops off for you. <laughs> They wouldn't be her. Please, elaborate. Because if I know Henry as well as I think I do, and of course I do, then he'll have no qualms with killing you, and would probably do it with a wedding theme. Well, anyone I could be with just wouldn't be her. They wouldn't have her eyes, or her smile, or light up when they see a beautiful knife. They just, they wouldn't make me feel the way I do when I'm with her. You do know what Henry Northcott is capable of, don't you? Yes, I do. No, you don't. Otherwise, you'd have to be a fool to risk his anger. Henry Northcott has killed more people than you've ever met. His underground crime syndicate has this special policy. They have to keep every person they have been contracted to kill alive until Henry himself has had the opportunity to look into their eyes and make sure that they know he was the one that killed them. And despite numerous sightings and a ton of evidence he has never and will never be listed as a suspect. The police know to stay out of his business. Now, tell me again, do you want to marry Jenna Northcott, the only daughter of the infamous Henry Northcott, who would cut your head off without a second thought? Yes. Okay, I'll take care of Northcott for you. You will? <laughs> yes, but you don't get something for nothing, Mr. Blum. Are you really sure you don't want to take the last name on Scott? Scott Blumhubber is my name. <laughs> what is your price? An invitation. Uh, to the wedding? Yes, to the wedding. The wedding of a daughter of a criminal of this magnitude is going to have the highest ranking crooks in attendance. Oh. I plan on being one of them. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are not having criminals at our wedding. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Try telling that to Jenna's godfather, a known arsonist who will view your house as kindling a stiff an invitation. What am I marrying into? If it helps, your own father commissioned a great many sex workers in his life. How do you know my father? I know everyone and everything in this town. The top's alive. Well, commissioning sex workers isn't a crime on par with the arson. <clears throat> it promotes an industry that regularly kidnaps and kills women. No one's hands are clean in this world. But don't worry, Scott. I'm sure yours will stay pristine. After all, it's not like Jenna's ever been involved in the family business, has she? It's not her fault! She was just a kid. She didn't know what was going on. You don't know her. You really do love her. Otherwise, you would be yelling at the only person who really does. I will do what I can about your daddy-in-law issues, but in the meantime, I really must insist on that invitation. What are you going to do to him? 
talk. That's all I ever do. And besides, it's not like I can do anything to Henry that he hasn't already done to somebody else. <laughs> True enough. I'll put you on the guest list. Perfect. I'll see you at the wedding. Mr. Bumpfucker, exit the club. Once again, regretting most of his life decisions. Meanwhile, Miss Adler stared off. Drink in hand, already at work, a flood. A day later, James Hyde lurks on the street outside Scarlet's Club, which now doubles as a crime scene. His intentions are unknown, even to himself. He's just about to give up on his reasonless lurking when Nessa O'Connell is unceremoniously thrown out onto the street, holding a jar of beer. How dare you! I deserve to be in this scene just as much as you do, Richardson! You! Hold this! <laughs> Nessa O'Connell? Yeah? Who are you? James Hyde! We went to elementary school together, and our parents are best friends, and I literally spent the majority of my childhood at your house. Oh, yeah! She got taller. <laughs> That's a very <laughs> new thing to say. Um, anyway, why am I holding this jar of water? Oh, that's not water, it's embalming fluid. Uh, doesn't that stuff cause cancer? Yeah, but not the five minutes you're gonna hold it for. I have to go physically fight my way into a crime scene. What? Why? Because they won't let me in. Uh, yeah, Nessa, it's a crime scene? I'm pretty sure there's a very small amount of people who are allowed in, and most of them are with the police. Well, luckily for me, I'm a private investigator who was hired to work this case! Unfortunately for him, Inspector Lawley's had hurt her. Unable to plead deniability, the tired officer walks onto the street in an attempt to placate Miss O'Connell. You're not allowed in the crime scenes, Miss O'Connell. <laughs> Since when? Since I started solving more cases than you? <laughs> I'm a police officer, not a schoolgirl running for homecoming queen. <laughs> oh, I am properly licensed. I've worked tons of cases and solved many murders that you didn't. Not to mention, there have been no changes in law or procedure that should prevent me from being allowed in now, lawless. Lawless. It's pronounced lawless. You should know that by now. The internet says it's pronounced lawless. Well, the internet's wrong, and you're still not allowed in. Uh, she should be, though, shouldn't she? I mean, she just needs to be locked by the officer at the door. And what do you know about crime scene investigations, mister? Uh, hi. James Hyde. <laughs> and actually, more than you'd probably think. I'm just finishing up a degree in criminal law, which included taking a class over police procedure. So you take one course in the subject and suddenly you're expert on the matter? <laughs> well, no, but being a defense lawyer law student does mean that I stand up for the Find rights loopholes of the marginal for the rich. Which, in this case, is my good friend Nessa. You do. Yeah, okay, fine. That's about the only even slightly true thing you've said. <laughs> Detective Richardson, both being both unnecessary and uninvolved, barrels outside to join in on these so-called clubs. You told me several times you don't have any friends. Yeah, Richardson, I told you that because you keep trying to invite me to your weird conspiracy theory club. Well, when the lion people who live in the sewers take over, you'll be sorry. Uh, I hate to ask, but don't you mean lizard people? No, everyone knows there's no such thing as lizard people. <laughs> She's in a group of conspiracy theorists who got kicked out of other conspiracy theory groups. Oh, God. <laughs> you dodged a bullet. Richardson, how is Miss O'Connell's lack of friends relevant to the present situation? They're lying. Like I said, O'Connell doesn't have friends. I bet he's not even a real lawyer. He's not. He's a law student. I thought that was pretty clear. And, and the only reason I can't say I'm a lawyer is because I haven't gotten my official certification back. But they're supposed to be emailed out sometime this week, so... Give me proof of your so-called education. Uh, let's see. I have a degree, several photos, multiple life writers from professors, and... Oh, yeah. Um, a pantry that only has ramen, canned corn, and flour in it. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like college to me. Yeah, Who do you want for? <laughs> well, currently, no one. Oh, yeah? I know the government sent you to spy on us. Richardson, you work for the government yourself. They don't need to send people to spy on you. <sighs> Wouldn't say that. Clear, kid. 
What happens if I don't let Miss O'Connell into the crime scene? I'll sue you for discrimination. It's not a matter of discrimination. No, it's not. But it could easily be turned into one. If you've ever let any male PIs in before, I could easily spin this to make it look like you didn't let Miss O'Connell onto the scene due to her gender. I mean, that's obviously the only reason you would ever not let her in, considering she's properly licensed and all that. Oh, yes. Or maybe it's because she's disrespectful of the scene and leaves her DNA everywhere. Well, do you have any proof of this pattern of behavior? Because that doesn't sound like my client at all, and I'm sure I could find several eyewitnesses who would be willing to vouch for her being careful and out of the way at crime scenes. Well, that's only because she's friends with the friends of analyst guys. Am I the only person you're not friends with? <laughs> I'm not friends with Lawless either. I don't like being coerced, young man. No one does, but you can't deny how effective it is. <laughs> O'Connell, Richardson is going to take you to the crime scene. But if you so much breathe within two feet of that body, I will have you arrested immediately for contaminating the crime scene. Am I understood? Understood. Oh. Yes, sir. Here, take my car. Just in case you run into any more situations. Thanks, James. Detective Richardson and Miss O'Connell enter the crime scene, much to the entire police department's dismay. Mr. Hyde, his inexplicable purpose apparently fulfilled, attempts to amble away. One minute, Mr. Hyde. <laughs> yes, sir? It's a quite a risky thing you did there, threatening a police officer. But you must like Miss O'Connell quite a bit. She's an old friend, sir, and uh. I like to make sure that people are treated fairly. Well, in the spirit of fairness, allow me to warn you that I'll be watching you very closely from now on. One toe out of line is all I need. Fortunately, I'm rather good at tightrope walking. <laughs> Mr. Hyde, rather proud of himself for thinking of a comeback so quickly, saunters away, leaving our inspector, if even possible, more frustrated than before. Now. As murder mysteries generally require a large amount of exposition, our story continues about three years, seven months, and 28 days before the murder. Scarlet is, as always, sitting in her club, doing what her taxes list as charity work. In this case, that apparently includes listening to Sarah Dent rant. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> wait. I don't want to wait. You really need to. Things he did to her, they, they uh, just... He's an asshole, sweetie. That's what he does. Well, he shouldn't be allowed to. That is what I help with. Oh, what? Keeping justice from being served? Everyone would be better off if there were no secrets. Instead, you take bribes on keeping quiet about them. Oh, really? Because I'm just absolutely certain that Mrs. Henley would love it if you told her husband that their kid isn't actually his. He's going to get away with everything, and you're going to let him. That is such a strong word. I do not let things happen. I guide them. I won't stand for this. If you don't tell anyone, then I will. Now, now. Let me see what I have on you, Miss Dent. One thing to know about Scarlett Adler is that she knows everything. Unfortunately, the human brain was not built to store all this information, so she must rely on a locked, fireproof filing cabinet to store all of her knowledge. It is from this cabinet that she pulls a folder with large green tab labeled Sarah Jane Dent that she then begins to read. Oh my. You're rather young for someone with quite a traumatic background. <laughs> you can't use that file against me. I'm proud of my family, and you can't change that. As you should be, honey, as you should be. But that doesn't change the fact that I can't let you tell me. But it, um, risks my position, so to speak. <laughs> so instead, let me offer you this compromise. This girl is Nessa O'Connell. She just graduated with an undergrad in chemistry and is currently working on her master's in criminology with the intent of becoming a private investigator. She's writing her master's thesis on how Henry has used his power to prevent any litigation from his more and let's just say, well-known crimes. Oh, and she's looking for a roommate. Why should I care? She offers you perfect access to him. They are childhood friends after all. He doesn't keep in touch with her anymore. James Hyde wants Henry Northcott dead just as much as the rest of us. 
once the monster is gone, he's going to want to make sure he's close to someone who's wisely convinced of his innocence, like a childhood friend. And of course, he can skew the proof that way, like a PI. How convenient Miss O'Connell was then. And you, as her roommate, will have the perfect opportunity to strike. Not gonna happen. I'm going to the police. With what exactly? It's not a police level crime, is it? Well, it should be. Then we'd be living in a police state. Besides, this situation is personal. You want to be the one to fix it. I don't have to listen to you. I came here for advice on helping taking him down. Instead, you're telling me about letting go and making a friend. Well, I never said anything of the sort. I told you, bide your time. Get close to the people that he's bound to get close to and then strike when the opportunity arises. Now, do you want me to put you in contact with Miss O'Connell or would you rather be arrested for assaulting a seemingly innocent man? I, I don't want to be roommates with a girl who's obsessed with Northcott. You know what he did to my family. Did I say that she was obsessed with Northcott? No, I said that she's writing her thesis on how he's used his power to corrupt our judicial system. Something that I believe you have personal experience in. It's something that I don't want to be reminded of every day of my life. <sighs> Honey, you already are. Look, she's not going to make it any worse, but she might be able to make it even just a little bit better. Considering our victim's chosen profession, it seems to be the least he deserved. Only the facts do. And what 
are the facts? Henry Northcott, aged 57, was attacked this morning. His attacker hit him over the back of the head with a glass container that shattered upon impact and covered him with some kind of chemical that caused burns. Who? what kind of chemical? We don't know yet. You really shouldn't be so excited about chemical burns. It's not every day I get to use my chemistry degree in real life. Please continue. <laughs> At that point, Northcott was still alive, though unconscious, so the killer slit his throat and allowed him to bleed out. At that point, Jenna Northcott arrived and called 911. That doesn't mean she was the killer. It doesn't mean she wasn't either. Inspector Lawley's, having just concluded a deeply frustrating conversation with Mr. Hyde, enters the crime scene to have an equally frustrating conversation with Miss O'Connell. Miss O'Connell, glad to see Richardson was able to keep you away from my body. Well, that's all right. I'm much more interested in talking to Miss Northcott than seeing another corpse. You can't just talk to my number one suspect. I have freedom of speech. Now move. <laughs> that's not what freedom of speech is referring to. Miss Northcott, may I ask you a couple questions? Miss O'Connell, I must insist that you do not pester my witness. <laughs> witness? I thought you said she was a suspect. Officially, she is a witness. I'm, I'm sorry, are you not with the police? I'm a private investigator who was hired to work this case. By who? Scarlett Adler, the club owner. She hired an outside investigator? Well, people dying in her club is bad for business. She wanted to... Make sure the guilty party was uh, held responsible. Oh, and she thinks she'll do a better job than I will. I'll answer your question. Great. No, she won't. You're not on this case. Sorry, but she doesn't work for you. She's free to answer any question she wants. Regardless, it's a bit insensitive at the moment to be fighting like this, don't you think? I mean, the poor girl just lost her father. Miss Northcott, I'm terribly sorry for your loss. I'm not. Called it! What? <laughs> Look, my dad was a dick, and I know that that doesn't help my case, but I'm not gonna sit here and pretend to be sorry that he was murdered. He was my dad, but he did a lot of shit that warranted this. Okay, can you tell me what happened around the time of the murder? About a month ago, I got engaged to my boyfriend, Scott Bloodhunter. <laughs> in that shitty detective work, you, you can't just present a bias. <laughs> I'm not. All the evidence clearly points to Jenna as the killer. She has motive, opportunity, and the training. Richardson, shut up. If I have to tell you again, I'll kick you out. Hey, 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 hey. You don't have the authority to do that, okay? I don't need authority. All I need is a foot. Okay. <laughs> Miss Northcott, back to you. Well... After about 10 minutes, I came back from my smoking break, and I, I found him dead. It was blood everywhere. Half of his face was burned off. I can't get it out of my head. I'm so sorry. So, should we take her in now, or wait until the DNA evidence comes back? We know you're going to find my DNA in that room. I was in there before he got killed. I've already admitted to that, but 
That doesn't prove that I killed him. Sure it doesn't. Look, I know, it's, it's hard to believe, but it, it's the truth. I was framed or something. I believe you've been framed. Might I ask why? Because Richardson doesn't. She's so reliably wrong that taking any side other than hers makes you right. Here, I'll prove it. Richardson, what's the moon made of? Everyone thinks that it's made out of Swiss cheese, but it's actually honeycombs created by giant intergalactic bees half a billion years ago. Oh, and what do you think about the moon landing? Clearly, they were returning the bees that fell to Earth during the moon construction. They just had to find a way to cover it up. And what about the astronauts who were said to have landed on the moon and returned to Earth? They're mind controlled by the government. They think they went to the moon, but they actually spent seven days in Australia. Ha! I rest my case. Fine, if I'm so wrong all the time, prove it. In the meantime, Jenna uh, Northcott, no. you are under arrest. Come see her at the station. Uh, Detective Richardson handcuffed Miss Northside, much to everyone's surprise. They hadn't even known the department had even allowed her to have handcuffs. <laughs> Miss Northside was dragged away from a flabbergasted Miss O'Connell. Now, once again, we set our sights to the past. Specifically, four years, 178 days, and 19 hours before the murder. Scarlett is sitting in your club, enjoying a drink at an inappropriately early hour, when James Hyde bursts in. James Hyde, what do you have on me? Nothing. Except for the fact that he's nothing from the evidence and records rooms of multiple police stations, illegally. <laughs> uh, no I didn't. Honey, I already know about it, you don't have to lie. <sighs> what do you want? Your face. Uh, like a leather face sort of situation? I wait, 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 wait. What? No. No, I don't want to make a mask out of your face. People always think I'm so much more evil than I am. What is with that? Then, what do you want? I want to use your connections, ergo your face to gather information. What connections? I'm young and broke. Which means you are invisible to older people. You're just the naive little assistant they don't notice until they need something. You do have an unpaid internship with the city prosecutor's office, do you not? Yes. So, I will tell you what to keep a lookout for, and you'll report back. <laughs> so, breaking the law will keep me out of jail? I'm not exactly sure if you're breaking the law by giving me information. You may be breaking your own moral code, but the law? Uh, how much time would I get in jail if you uh, were to release the information you have on me? jail time doesn't matter. What matters is that going to jail makes you a convict, and it is very difficult for convicts to get any job, let alone jobs as a lawyer. Fine. I'll work for you, but I will not be happy about it. That's fine, but before you go, I do have one small question I would love to have you answer. What? Why? Why agree to work for you? Why do you need to work for me in the first place? Stealing police files seems like such a bizarre choice of crime. Henry Northcott killed my dad. The police have all these files filled with evidence that could be used on any number of cases, but they don't do shit about it. I was gonna be the one who did. Didn't exactly find what you were looking for, huh? Hey, my dad was a good person. Well, what makes a good person? Their actions or their beliefs? I'm not here to argue philosophy with you. Come on, James, how good could he have possibly been? After all, you don't become police commissioner in this city without help of organized crime. It wasn't, it wasn't like that. He had to do those things. He had to protect his city from the actively corrupt cops who were actively working with the mob. Even if that meant that he corrupted himself. I envy you, James. You can look at your father's shady deals with a crime syndicate and see the good he did in preventing something worse from becoming commissioner. Meanwhile, I can't even look at a microwave without thinking of all of the people that I know who have stuck a spoon in there just to watch someone's house burn down. I'm naive. I know. No, you're just not cynical. 
I have spent my life thus far chronicling every single misdeed I could find. It wears away at you. It is hard to remember that people live their lives in a race of grays when I just spent so much time looking at the black. Anyway, my two o'clock will be here any second now, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. How will you let me know what I should be looking for? I have my ways. Goodbye, Mr. Hyde. Great. Ominous response. Should have expected that. See you later, Scarlet. The day after the murder, at 8.18 in the morning, Jennifer Cuts is in an interrogation room, trying best to figure out how to convince the police that she is innocent. Unfortunately, all of her solutions involve murder. She's still ruminating on her predicament when Inspector Lawless enters the room with the requisite file and day-old coffee. Hello, Miss Northcott. I didn't kill him. And frankly, I'm surprised that you would accuse me. I didn't. I believe your innocent Detective Richardson <laughs> accused you. But now, it's your job to prove it to us. No. It's your job to prove that I did it. It was my job, but we have more than enough evidence to convict you. And it is now your job to make our evidence seem less convincing. Fuck off. Excuse you. <laughs> I said, fuck off. You know that I didn't kill him, but you're going to throw me in jail just to say that you put someone away for the murder of Henry Northcott. Trump. You don't care about the truth. Just getting the quickest answer. Trust me, Miss Northcott. I don't want to put you in jail for this, but I'm going to have no choice unless you can somehow prove it wasn't you. You're the only DNA we found in the crime scene. Well, you and Miss O'Connell's, but the lab techs just ignore her DNA now. Aside, people trust DNA more than any other kind of evidence these days. No shit, my DNA was in there. I was in the room before he got killed. It's not like I magic erased her every place I leave, just in case there happens to be a murder there later. Miss Northcott, can you tell me if there's anyone who wanted to hurt your father? The entire city. Anyone who especially wanted to kill your father? Oh, let me think. The entire city. Miss Northcott, if you're not going to cooperate. I can't tell you anything that you don't already know. Fine. Tell me about your fiancé, then. If you touch him, you'll have to put me in jail for a different murder. Oh. <laughs> One thing to know about Janet Northcott is that she gets what she wants. It just so happens that, in this case, what she wants is a dorky fiancé. Now, he's speaking to Mr. Blue Camper. He just so happens to barge into the interrogation room, right at that moment, almost as if it were planned. Jenna! Jenna, what's going on? Yeah, I, I don't know I was here. <coughs> a girl, a private investigator called me. O'Connell! <laughs> <laughs> Having invoked the name of his age-old enemy, Lolly stalks away to confront his foe. Jenna, what's going on? Scott, I didn't kill him. I need you to believe me. I didn't kill him. Please, you have to believe me. Jenna, I believe you. Of course I believe you. For one thing, you can't keep a secret for shit. I never had to learn how. Everyone already knew what was going on. And for another thing, I know you. You're not a killer. Yeah, but you're not innocent either. Yeah, but you only steal things and mildly assault people. Besides, Slitting a throat? Where's the style in that? It just leaves a mess. You know, you're right. If I was going to kill someone, I think I'd go for poison. It's much classier. <laughs> you have no right to talk to my witness. But you've forgotten about attorney-client privilege. You're not an attorney. I know, but he is. The he in question slams open the door with a flourish. And to increase the drama of his entrance, he made another boa. Sup, bitches! <laughs> and, sir? Since when did Mr. Hyde a real lawyer? As of an hour ago, when I got my certification! <laughs> this is ridiculous. By law, I have the right to speak to my client alone. What about Miss O'Connell? Uh, she's part of my defense team. And, and Miss 
Mr. Blum Hubbard? <laughs> Blum Hubbard? That is not a real name. <laughs> that would be my last name. <laughs> He's my fiance. Oh, yeah, you can stay there. So let me get this straight. I am the only one being kicked out of my own interrogation room. <laughs> you seem tense, Detective. You should really try taking up a hobby, like gardening, Sudoku. It's Inspector. And yes, perhaps ripping out weeds will help me relax. Thank you, Mr. Hyde, for your brilliant suggestion. So, I know you're the P.I. girl from the crime scene. Yes, Ness O'Connell, <laughs> nice to see you again. And, um, but, uh, who is he? Oh, uh, I'm James Hyde. You're new. You're new defense attorney. <laughs> Assuming you don't already have one. I don't. Dad never needed a lawyer before. Everyone was too scared they didn't prosecute him. You know, it feels a little sexist that they think it's okay to prosecute me. Uh, I wouldn't call that sexism. I think you just don't have the cruel reputation your father did. That doesn't mean I'm not as cruel as he was. <laughs> That's an example of something we will not say to Lawless. I'd like to see him try to put me in jail. Uh, he can. Very easily. But I'm not guilty. Well, it's estimated that about 1 in 25 people on death row aren't guilty either. Um, people get convicted on how the jury feels about them. Rarely on the actual quality of evidence. So I'm screwed. Uh, no, you are not. We just need to solve this case before you get convicted. <clears throat> Good luck with that. This entire city wanted to kill him. Ah, we don't care about who wanted him dead. We want to know what changed in the last month or so that signed his death certificate. Can you think of anything? Scott and I got engaged. Uh, can you think of anything that doesn't make you sound like a suspect? Uh, uh, Mr. Northcott found out that Jenna's mom had been hiring security guards to follow him around for years. He got rid of them. So he was walking around without security for the first time in years? Yeah. That does open a lot of opportunities for people that had old grudges again. Now, you know what I don't get is how the killer knew where Northcott was going to be. This wasn't a regularly scheduled thing he did, right, Jenna? Well, this would be a first. Exactly. So how did they know he'd be at Scarlet's club? Uh, maybe someone hacked into his phone? No, he only ever used burners for that exact reason. Uh, maybe someone secretly implanted him with a tracking device. That is a really stupid theory, James. Okay, but we don't have to solve the case, right? You could get me out based on how flimsy their evidence is. Well, that's a possibility, but there's also a real possibility that the jury will think you killed him simply because of who you are. She's not a killer! <laughs> she is the daughter of a killer. Um, his reputation makes every little bad thing she's ever done look like a neon road sign to the words, future killer! Oh, God, the entire prosecution is just going to be a character assassination. Detective Richardson, somehow managing to deafen an already drenched mood, enters the crime scene. Your friend in the morgue has been looking for you. Ah, oh, good. I could use some more information about the state of the body. We'll talk again later, Jenna. Plead the fifth and don't tell him anything more than what you've already said. Really? Your friends with her now and not me? We are part of her defense team. We are not exactly friends. Why don't you like me? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. You make fun of me all the time, you refuse to listen to reason, and you're the one who came up with the nickname Wicked Bitch of the West on the one day I wore green. <laughs> <laughs> why would I like you? Yeah, well, you're not a ray of sunshine either. <laughs> Can we just- You always solve the real detective's cases before we even have the chance to properly look into them, and you're always telling us what idiots are not to mention, you stole my crush. I really- I didn't go on a date with him. I can't help if people fall in love with me. Ladies! As fascinating as this all is, I can't help but feel that maybe we should be focusing on the case and not the petty grievances y'all do have against each other. Also, it's totally unprofessional to fight in front of a client and her fiance like this. Sorry. Now, Nessa, let's go talk to your mortician friend. Detective Richardson, please, lead the way. The lowering lawyer, Daniel.
Wayne, the Dignity Private Investigator, and conspiracy theorists walk out of the room with what has to be the lamest joke of all time. <laughs> that is my defense team. Well, on the plus side, I don't think they've asked us to pay them. <laughs> and what is sadly our last flashback of this tale, we return to Scarlet's Club, and what a surprise. <laughs> Approximately six years, 178 days, and 19 hours before the murder. Scarlet is cleaning the bar when Inspector Lawless walks in. Even though he is years younger, and rocking a dope mustache, the inspector still looks as tired as I feel as he drops into a chair. <laughs> shut about me and act any other way you want. Mm. Well, if all you need me to do is, of course, keep your secrets, then get out of my club! Perfect. Although, I do have some information you might want to know. Assuming you have a file on Henry Northcott. No. I can't use any information against him if no one will keep him accountable, therefore he likes the file. The fucker has started stealing high-class art, and it makes no sense! Y you can't sell art that famous because everybody knows you don't legally own it. And what's the point? Because you can't then legally display it. And the only thing to do with that kind of high class art is display it for your rich neighbors so they know what kind of important asshole you are. And, and it isn't for his love of art. He hates art. He doesn't have a single piece on display in his house. All he displays is priceless books. You know, pictures, paintings, sculptures, or anything. Just books. And why do I care about his newfound love of art? It's a pattern diversion. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, it is. I've been working for him and the police since I was 25. I know his MO like the back of my hand from seeing it happen and from analyzing the crime scenes afterwards. I would know when he's off brand. It's not a pattern diversion. It's a way of getting his daughter involved in the family business. What? Mm, she's 16 now, Gregory. That is plenty old enough to learn how to become a she has to take over for her father when the time comes. <laughs> this is her training, etc., etc. I'm tired of it. I am so tired of it. He doesn't tell me shit. It's expect for me to clean up after him. Do you know how many times the lab techs have found my fingerprints all over the crime scene? I've had to take it to forgetting to wear gloves so they seem less suspicious of it. How terrible. And what do I get out of all of this? Um, money? But it can't be open about my money, and then people would know I'm working for Northcott. So I have to sit on it until I retire, and then move out of the country, so that nobody suspects where it came from. The worst part is that he doesn't even appreciate my work. So stop working. He'd kill me. Well, that certainly would help you to shut up now. I'd kill him before I'd let him kill me. Really? Then do it then. <laughs> Look, as a cop yourself, I'm sure you could easily make it look like it wasn't you. No, I'm not gonna kill him. Mm, you are no fun. Why wouldn't you kill him? Would you? Without hesitation. Well, it doesn't matter if I kill him, because I'd still be dead. Someone would avenge his death, and then where am I? In hell next to the man I just killed. That's odd. What? The fact that you're still here, I told you once. Are <laughs> you really gonna kick me out? After all, I could easily arrest you for extortion. 
and I can just as easily reveal your connections to Henry. Now, I wonder, can evidence gathered by a corrupt cop be used legally in court? And we're back at our standoff. Stand still. The two foes glared at each other, all kinds of tension emanating from their stares. <clears throat> now, dear friends, if I ever have the privilege of calling you that, it looks like I have unfortunately run out of alcohol. <laughs> As I cannot legally endorse you to get blackout drunk while listening to this story, I shall have to get drunk on your behalf. Now, whilst I refill my glass, please enjoy some silence. <laughs> to our story. Detective Richardson stands halfway through the door to the morgue, signaling Mr. Hyde and Miss O'Connell to stop. Wait here. Neither of you are allowed the morgue. I'm surprised you didn't fight her on that. Oh, Sarah tells me everything I could ever need to know about the body. Sometimes she tells me more things than I wanted to know. How did you make friends with the mortician anyway? Oh, Sarah's my roommate. She answered my newspaper ad like three years ago. Her being a mortician was just good luck. You put an ad in the newspaper? Well, how else would I do it? Uh, you ask your friends and family for people to live with. You, you don't put an ad in the newspaper. Anyone could have answered it. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself, James. In case you've forgotten, we hadn't talked since we were 11. You have no idea what I'm capable of at this point. Look, I know that you can take care of yourself, but that's not going to stop me from worrying. A sweet moment, but as all nice things, it has to be ruined just a moment later by Detective Richardson. She has been trailed by Miss Dent. The poor girl has only a second to process the surprise, anger, and resentment at seeing James Hyde unexpectedly before she forces a smile. Only her clenched fist, suffocating the small device in her hand, give her away. Uh, Sarah Dent! James Hyde, it's, <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, yeah! Funny story, um, your sister made it very clear to me that I was not to talk to anyone who knew her ever again. Oh. How dramatic of her. Mr. Hyde, having finally gotten over his shock, notices the large amount of red stains on Miss Dent's apron. For the first time today, she smiles for real at his horrified look. I'm really sorry about the blood. It's, it's just a hazard of being a mortician. Uh, it's a lot of blood. Ooh, what blood type was he? B. Oh, ho, ho, I was right. Japanese blood type personality theory really holds up. Anyway, have you had a chance to examine the heart yet? I want to know if I was right about his heart disease. Uh, I have to check the blocked arteries. Um, it's really hard to find anything with the blood and everything. <laughs> Can we please stop talking about blood? What's in your hand? Oh, it's a tracking device. An old commissioner installed it on North Pot telling him so they didn't accidentally catch him at the scene. He actually used it to murder the case against Norcott. But Norcott found out, murdered, and replaced the commissioner before that could happen. You were right about the tracker? Uh, the commissioner was my dad. <laughs> How's the autopsy going? Well, it was a violent death, I can tell you that.
was a piece of writing from his neighbor, so no one ever questioned it. It didn't matter that Norm Cup publicly took credit for the murder. She's still serving well. <laughs> I know how you feel. No, you don't. <laughs> really? Henry Northcott murdered my father and then came to the funeral. I remember, walked up to me, looked me in the eyes, and told me that my dad was a good man, but that even good men die when they get in the way of other people's happiness. <laughs> like that monster knew what it was like to be happy. Oh, but he did. Henry Northcott was a monster, don't get me wrong, but he was also human. He has a daughter and wife who apparently loved him enough to hire security guards to protect him. We keep thinking of his reputation, not who he really was. Uh, I know he was human. I was just cutting up his dead body a couple of seconds ago. Where are you going with this? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I just, I can't figure out why he didn't get murdered before. Your reputation only protects so much. Maybe the timing was wrong. <coughs> you got anything new on the body? Uh, a couple things, actually. Um, first, Northcott didn't fight back against his murderer. His wounds are to me, and his fingernails are immaculate. Um, second, the chemical he was attacked with was sodium hydroxide, which has severely screwed up any hopes of examining the face. And lastly, I found pieces of the container that this chemical was stored in on his scalp. Someone was using glass to store sodium hydroxide. Doesn't that seem a little precarious? Why not use a plastic container and pour it over his head? Why carry it around? Glass. Yeah, there's a large chance the glass would break. Also, sodium hydroxide is corrosive to glass. It would have eaten through it given a couple hours. Wait a minute, can we talk about how insane it is that someone originally tried to kill Northcott by, by ponging him in the head with a flask full of chemicals? It, it sounds like something from a B-list horror movie. It is an odd way to kill someone. It was clearly not effective either, uh, considering that the killer also had to fit, slit Northcott's have we found the knife that did that yet? No. So, did this help us at all? Well, we know our killer is an idiot who tried to be dramatic and failed. That doesn't narrow it down at all. <laughs> oh, the tracker. <laughs> who had access to North Costa? Uh, anyone with access to the police database, and anyone who was skilled enough or had enough money to hire someone to hack into that database. It still helps, James. Since we stand at exhaustive usefulness, Detective Richardson returns. While her phone call may have only taken two minutes, she spent the rest of the time hypocritically berating the idiocy of her colleagues. Ben, Johnson's here. Needs you to walk him through what you've already done. Duty calls. I'll see you at home, Nessa, and... James? Sarah, purpose served, sachet chantés away. <laughs> uh, did she seem kind of hostile to you? Oh yeah, she hates you. Like, me, specifically. <laughs> what did I do? Something to her sister. She didn't say what specifically. But her sister? I think it's time we go talk to my client. We don't have anything new for them. No, but I think there's some things she's been keeping from me. We're gonna find out what. Why is everyone being so dramatic lately? She's been keeping things from me. Well, so is the government, but I don't go around ominously saying it. I'll be glad when this whole investigation is over. Since it was already five o'clock and you get what you pay for, Miss O'Connell decided to, as I believe no one says, knock off. Meanwhile, Miss Northcott sits in interrogation room, apparently forgotten by the police, despite being the number one suspect in a murder case. Thankfully, she had Scott with her to keep her company. They spent the night in conversation about their wedding and whether Miss O'Connell would be able to clear the charges and, as the night got deeper, thoughts they never discussed with anyone else before. Just look at them. Why aren't they so cute? Love isn't real. <laughs> You can't interrogate us without my lawyer here. I know my rights. I'm not here to interrogate.
interrogate you. I'm here to ask you for anything you might have to help you. exonerate you for the murder. I've been through this. I have no idea how to convince you that I'm innocent. Do you have any new evidence we can look at? I have some security tapes. Inspector Lawless places a laptop on the interrogation room table and begins the tape. The room is silent for a few minutes until a figure enters the screen. There! That's the killer! Thank you, ma'am. We would have never figured that out without you. Well, she doesn't look anything like me, so it wasn't me. Case closed. It's a disguise. If I fast forward a couple minutes, you can see them adjusting their wig. And there are several minutes between you and the killer being seen on the security tape. You could have easily changed it to that disguise. But I didn't... I know. Look, this video is low quality. It doesn't prove anything except that someone walked into and then out of the club after you left, which we could already safely assume. You know, that person in the tapes kind of looks like P.I. girl. It does kind of look like Nessa. Doesn't it? But, like you were saying, that doesn't prove anything. No. Unfortunately, it does not, which is why, again, I'm here to ask you for anything that could get you off the hook. Are there security tapes that show me in the alley? No. Miss Adler doesn't have any cameras back there. She likes her clients to feel safe doing shady deals in the alley. Scott, is there anything I'm not thinking? <laughs> nope. Uh, well, did you smoke a cigarette that we could find it? Trace the DNA on it back to you, prove you weren't in the building at no, the time. No, I know, okay. but I don't actually smoke. Well, it's just a lot of... I hired Scarlet Adler Blackmail Mr. Northcott into accepting my marriage to Jenna. You did. What? God, why didn't you tell me? Dad would have paid for the whole wedding if he knew that you had it in you to blackmail him. <laughs> you paid Scarlet Adler to murder Henry Northcott. No, 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 not murder him, just blackmail him. How much did you pay her? I did it. She just wanted an invitation to the wedding. What could she possibly want with that? Uh, to celebrate our love. Babe, <laughs> yeah. I'm so touched that you would commit a felony for me. <laughs> so you did not ask Miss Adler to murder Henry Northcott? No, I specifically asked her not to. Do you, do you think she would have gone against your instructions and murdered him anyways? I don't know. I've never done an underhanded deal before. Wait, this makes no sense. Why would Scarlet hire a P.I. to look into Dad's death if she was guilty? People have done a lot of things to not seem guilty, and, as your fiancé pointed out, the person in the video did look a lot like Miss O'Connell herself. Yeah, a little. What better cover than to hire the guilty party herself to investigate? You know, make sure the police aren't on to you, clean up the crime scene while she's at it, and we still haven't found the knife. That's ridiculous. Why would Nessa be helping a murderer? You know she wrote her master's thesis two months ago over your father and his, as she puts it, remarkable ability to avoid the consequences of his monstrous actions. She has a strict moral code that she unwaveringly sticks to, but that code is an eye for an eye. My guess is she doesn't see the murder of your father as unwarranted. Well, I don't either. But that doesn't prove that she killed him. No, it does not. I'm just simply pointing out the fact that looking into Miss O'Connell and Miss Adler would not be a miss. Miss O'Connell's DNA was the only DNA we found in the crime scene, aside from yours. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go question her. With the look of a man far too excited about the possibility of his colleague being a murderer, Lawless runs out of the room. You really think that sweet P.I. girl could have killed someone? Well, you... You hired someone to blackmail my dad, so... I guess anything's possible. It was one time! I love you too. I love you. I love you more. Oh, really? I solicited extortion for you. What crime did you commit for me? I stole your heart, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you did. <laughs> On that cliche note, you return to Scarlet's club. It's eerily quiet in that club, as normally crowded places are when the people are missing. 
Tessa O'Connell sits in the only occupied table, enjoying the silence. Meanwhile, Mr. Hyde sits on the sits across the table from her, sweaty worse than a sinner in church. When Miss Adler enters to find them waiting for her, she smiles. Well, well, I haven't seen that gorgeous at the table since the models from Project Runway came in here. This is your client. Hi, Scarlett. How are you? Alive, for now. Tell me, sweetie, in your professional opinion, how do you think I'll die? Isn't there a more pressing matter for us to be talking about? Uh, nothing is more pressing than death. I mean, I can die in the next minute and never know how. Won't you tell me? If I had to guess, I say you get strangled by an ex-lover who believes he's entitled to you despite the fact that you only slept with him once. What about me? You fall out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> like, I fall out of bed on knives or spikes or something. No, the fall itself kills you. <laughs> what did I ever do to you? As much as I love your theory, honey, I'm afraid I don't have any entitled ex-lovers. Though, of course, I wouldn't mind you being one. Ah, damn, you're right. I changed my answer to shot execution style for knowing too much. Now that is the way to go out. The drama and the danger of my end do have to fit those of my life. Speaking of which, you're in a rather dangerous situation right now. Am I? You have purposefully kept information from me, and you of all people should know that I will stop at nothing to get it. I was wondering how long it would take for you to figure that out. Be back in a moment. Scarlet walks away, giving Mr. Hyde whose already high level of anger had only increased with Ms. O'Connell's prediction of his death, a chance to air his grievances. Scarlett Adler? Seriously? She hired me. And then you trust her. You do know what she does for a living, right? She runs this club and the lucrative blackmail business. But she can't blackmail me. I don't have any secrets. That doesn't mean- James, I know, okay? I know about Scarlett. I know what she has on you, and I know you will never trust her. But if she's willing to, Scarlett has the resources that can solve this case in less than five minutes. You know about the files. Scarlett was a tad concerned when I first took this job that you might have something to do with Northcott's murder. I assured her that was ridiculous, so she showed me what she did. For the record, James, I still don't think you would do it. It's just not you. Are you sure? Are you really? Uh, James, it would have been easy to kill Northcott. He didn't have security, he didn't carry a single weapon on his person, and at this rate, he doesn't even count as a human being. James! It wouldn't have taken much effort. Slitting someone's throat can't be much harder than what? Putting an envelope open? And really, you're the only even slightly competent person on this case. Avoiding detection would be child's play. You forget, Nessa, that Northcott murdered my father. And it seems you've also forgotten that I would do anything to get what I want. How else would I be a lawyer given my criminal record? <coughs> you know what? You're right, Nessa. We don't know each other. And don't you dare think you know what I'm capable of. <sighs> James! Mr. Hyde walks away. Miss O'Connell just stands there, staring at the place where he stood trying to understand when Miss Adler returns. I see Mr. Hyde left us prematurely. Was it something I said? No, it was me. And what could a pure soul like you possibly do to warrant such a dramatic exit? <coughs> I always have to have the answer. Well, coming from someone with first-hand experience in the matter, knowledge is power. <laughs> it's not knowledge. <coughs> Even if I have no idea what's going on, I have to at least pretend I do. Otherwise, what good am I? You're a good person. Like that matters! No one wants a PI who doesn't have answers for them. No one respects a woman who doesn't look like she knows exactly what's going on at all times. I have to appear completely confident in everything I do every damn second of my life. I have to pretend I know exactly who that guy is, even though I haven't seen him in years, because I told someone I knew him. 
and they are looking for any excuse to discredit me, to make me look like a complete idiot or a liar, and I will never give them that chance. You don't have to have all of the answers here. Instead, I will. Please tell me Nessa's here. No, she's not. Well, I have been 
calling her for three hours now, and she hasn't answered. I went back to Scarlet's club to check if she was there. Neither of them were, but their cars still were. Why would their cars still be there? I can't just leave what I said to her said. I wasn't thinking, and God, I definitely hurt her feelings. Miss Dent, already having a vendetta against Mr. Hyde, finally sees her opportunity to exact revenge. She grabs a broom and begins hitting him over the head with it. He, understandably, begins to run away and she, also understandably, gives chase. Get out! What the hell? I said get out! How dare you hurt another person I love? What? First, you sleep with my sister and then you break Ness's heart. Wait a minute. Did you ever think that maybe they were too good for you? Or maybe that's why you did it. To get them on your level. Why do you even care if I slept with your sister? Oh, so you admit it. It's the 21st century. We dated for a year. Yeah, we had sex. <laughs> How dare you? You you use her for her body, and then you break up with her at the first sign of her pushing back. Wait a sec. I didn't break up with her because she wouldn't sleep with me. Oh, really? So now you're calling her a liar. Tell me then, why did y'all break up? Well, based on what you've said, I don't think you're going to believe me. Of course not, but I want to hear your excuse. She was kind of sleeping with multiple people at the time. Is that the best that you got? It's the truth. We broke up because I caught her performing a Fifty Shades act with a lit major. These make your own lies convincing. <laughs> I'm not lying. His name was, oh, what was his name? Brandon? Brendan? Brayden? Brady Montgomery? Yes, that's it. They've been going behind my back for months, that asshole. Just if not her, I was in love with her. Totally had over the cross. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm the only one left to protect her and you hurt her. I didn't mean to. Look, Sarah, I was heartbroken too. I haven't had a serious relationship since. First, you break my sister's heart. And now you break Nessa's heart. What did you even do? I was mad at myself, and I took it out on her. I, I told her she doesn't even know me. She doesn't. Not the point. Look, I need to apologize to her, but when I went back to Scarlet's club, both of them were gone, but their cars were still there. Scarlet's phone was cracked and lying on the ground, and she left out a cocktail. Scarlet does not leave alcohol on drunk. I'm worried something happened to them. Nessa can handle herself. You don't need a babysitter. Look, I know that she can take care of herself, but that's not going to stop me from worrying about her. She's one of my oldest friends. I don't want anything to have happened to her. Wait. So you actually care about her? Yeah. You're not using her to exonerate yourself of Northcott's murder. What? I didn't kill Northcott. Then who did? Is Nessa O'Connell here? Who are you, and how do you know where she lived? Oh, I'm Scott Blumhoff. <laughs> <laughs> Why does everyone laugh at my last name? Dude, your last name is Blumhopper. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> convinced himself that she was the one responsible for killing Jenna's dad. When he didn't come back within the hour, we got worried. So Richardson's been helping us look for the both. He didn't even tell her where he was going. It seemed a little odd. You said you made her upset, right, James? Yeah. Well, maybe she's just ignoring your calls. I'll, I'll check on her. I'll let Richardson know that Ness is not here. She went down to the hospital to see if she was with Scarlett. Scarlett's in the hospital? Yeah. Uh, she was poisoned about three hours ago. They have her hooked up to an artificial breathing machine, so she should be okay in two or three days. <laughs> With Miss Dent and Mr. Clues Clues focused on their phones, James Hyde begins to take in more of his surroundings. He's studying the kitchen when suddenly something dawns on him. She's not answering me. I 
Hey, Sarah, are y'all missing a night? Yeah, it's been gone for a while now. Like, before Northcott's murder? Yes. What are you getting at? Oh, shit. We've got to go. Uh, Sarah, are you tracking us as far by any chance? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I would never do that. <laughs> Tracker phone. I put it on her house keys. Great, let's go. Should I call Richardson? Uh, have her meet us there. Ness is in danger. I try my damnedest to keep you away from the body, and still no one will consider you a suspect. <laughs> Even with your DNA everywhere. You, you planted my DNA? Oh, for once. The mighty Miss O'Connell has no idea what's going on. Too bad only Inspector Idiot knows what's happening, is that right? Wait, did you kill Northcott? Oh, please, O'Connell. That's too easy of a question. You can't expect me to answer that. Yeah, well, I think I have a concussion, so it's the best I've got. <laughs> pathetic. Then again, you've always been. I've never been. Oh, it's pathetic how hard you try to gain the respect of people who will never respect you. I mean, why should we? You're nothing but a presumptuous bitch with no experience and no idea when to stop. I've still solved more murders than you this year. I know, and I don't care. This isn't about that. It's all about that thesis you wrote two months ago. <laughs> My thesis doesn't have anything to do with you unless... Unless... You're one of the cops who've been covering up for North Cop. And she is back in the game. Now, tell me, have you heard of Russian roulette? <laughs> See, this is kind of like that, except I'm going to be shooting you and we will not be taking turns. You, you're gonna kill me? <laughs> I didn't want to. So my plan fell apart. Your plan to frame me for Northcott's murder. It was supposed to be perfect. You had just written your thesis about how upset you were that Northcott had got away with anything. I had access to your DNA and your fingerprints. I used chemicals as a murder weapon. You surely trace back to a chemist such as yourself. All I had to do was press the etching of your fingerprints into the vial of sodium hydroxide. Your fingerprints would have been on the murder weapon, not to mention all over the body. <laughs> What's so funny? Really? You thought using sodium hydroxide was a good idea? <laughs> First of all, chemicals don't kill people fast enough to work efficiently. Secondly, it corrodes glass, taking my fingerprints with it. Didn't work out the way you wanted it to, did it? No, it didn't. Especially didn't expect the backsplash of the vial breaking to blister my arm. But luckily, I had a backup plan. Oh, it had to be fake that that day I stopped by your apartment because I had some forms to drop off for you to sign. And that instant, I remembered Henry and him framing poor Sarah Dent's mother how well that worked out for him. So I took one of your knives. The fingerprints on the vial didn't trace back to you, surely the ones on that wood. But then the knife disappeared. Scarlet couldn't keep her hands out of it, could she? You did kind of kill someone in her club. It wasn't my fault. I've been tracking him for days with that trap we had on him. This was the first time I found him completely alone. I couldn't pass up that opportunity. Not when it came so infrequently. He 
knew you. That's why he didn't fight back. He thought you were just a friend coming to talk. I wasn't a friend. I was a fucking minion. Wait, hold on. Hard stop. Were you wearing a wig that looked like my hair? <laughs> this wasn't the first time a crime had happened in one of Scarlet's clubs. I knew where the cameras were. I knew how many were there were. I knew the quality of the feeds. So yes, I wore a wig that resembled your hair to slightly trick the cameras. Confused Henry more than anything else. In fact, his last words were, you're starring in a drag show? <laughs> Great last words, aren't they? A smile opposes the inspector's lips, but it doesn't quite reach his eyes. Miss O'Connell stares at him, horrified. This is the first time she's ever seen him happy. I guess I have been monologuing for a bit, haven't I? Guess now I'm really gonna have to kill you. Tell me, do your friends believe, would they believe, that you committed suicide? No, oh, if you think I'm not going to fight, you are sorely mistaken. You can always frame it on someone else. What about Sarah Dent? Be poetic irony to have the same fate befall her that befell her mother. What about Mr. Hyde? Ooh, could have been a lover's quarrel. Ew, we're not lovers. Even that moron, Detective Richardson. Her desperate need to be your friend, your constant rejection, easily be set for a motive. This isn't fair! I've done nothing wrong and neither have they! Oh, you can look for justice in the courts of hell. Your sentence is set. Uh, just tell me one thing. Oh, Miss O'Connell, do we have a dying request? Have you heard of the card game Uno? How? Because <laughs> I just played a reverse card! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, get off me! Okay. Great, actually. It's a real ego boost to realize that you bother people enough that they want to murder you. Yeah. It means I'm doing something right. <laughs> Jane, keep him pinned down. No, Scott, move your skin, Scott! Just each of you take one of his wrists and pin them behind his head. Oh my god, a different wrist each. <laughs> Detective Richardson handcuffs her for the colleague in an absolutely rip roaring turn of events. You can tell by my voice how excited I am. <laughs> Gregory Lollies, you are under arrest for. Give me a minute, give me a minute. What was it again, James? Really? How about the attempted murder of Nessa O'Connor? The poisoning of Scarlett Adler? The murder of Henry Northcott? Obstruction of justice! Where'd you get the obstruction charge from? He worked for Northcott, cleaning up crime scenes, literally obstructing justice. He worked for Northcott? Since when? Oh, right, yeah, y'all weren't here for the whole monologue thing. <laughs> Wait, then how did you figure out all of the murdering stuff? Uh oh, James, we sit on again. James? <laughs> oh, James Hyde figured it out. But that is a low blow. Oh, God, that hurts. <laughs> it was your missing knife that made me suspicious. Like, okay, sure, the whole you and Lollies disappearing at the same time thing was a pretty big tip off, but the knife really sealed it. I mean, you don't just misplace a knife. Those things are sharp and hella expensive. Then I remembered how Sarah had been talking about how Lollies was the one that took her statement all those years ago back when her mother was framed. You got all that from a missing knife. Well, there's also the fact that Scarlet was poisoned, and the only people allowed in her club right now are police, since it's a crime scene. And I have to say, walking into the room, finding and pointing a gun at you, pretty big indicator. One last question. Yeah? Which one of you fuckers is tracking me? Miss <laughs> O'Connell stares down the stairs. His man takes the opportunity Sarah! to open the door and her incredibly offended roommate running out to her. <laughs> Scott, be a dear and go stop them before they hurt themselves. Why me? You're the best at conflict resolution. I'd just trip them both. I would probably just make them, ins I would just probably insult them until they chase me, you know? Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> now let me go, Scott, or I will, I will shove this jelly bean up your nostril. Really? You're gonna put me away 
jail for trying to kill that. I'm settling for putting you into jail for trying to kill her. If I had it my way, you'd already be dead. No, 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 no,
Blue Eve in search of a fire extinguisher. Oh, I really should go say hi to him. I have not seen him in years. Anyway, I'm glad everything turned out exactly as I planned. Yeah. Hi! Oh, nice guy. Everyone nods politely as Miss Adler walks away. They're about to go back to drinking free alcohol and exchanging pleasantries when they all collectively freeze as her words set in. Everyone, except Chief Inspector Richardson. She's playing with the tinfoil earrings she made, especially for this occasion. <laughs> did she just say exactly as I planned? What exactly did she plan? Oh, Norm Cuts murder. What? It's obvious, isn't it? Uh, no, it's the exact opposite of obvious. What the hell are you talking about? Scarlet planned the entire murder of Henry Northcott. Scott hired her to ensure she wouldn't to ensure he wouldn't prevent her from marrying Jenna. And then the next day, Lolly finds the opportunity to kill the man in her club. It's really convenient. Wait, wait, wait. But she didn't know that we were all going to be involved. <laughs> she hired Nessa to look into the murder, even though I'm pretty sure she already knew Lolly's was the killer. But how could she have known that? <clears throat> we had a standing appointment on Tuesday night, drinks and ranting. She was, he was as much her informant as he was North Fox. He just didn't realize it. Scarlet was the one who told me when Northcott died. Uh, told me that I should meet her at the club to talk about what to do about it. Uh, which is how I ran into you and got involved in all this in the first place. <sighs> Look, say what you will, but Scarlet Adler is a criminal mastermind who has managed to keep herself out of jail and alive while manipulating highly influential people and top-level officials. It's not out of the bounds of reality that she somehow managed to kill a man when he happened to be there. Anyways, I started to come up with a theory about what they actually do in Area 51. <laughs> Everyone thinks that it's aliens, but if you look at ley lines overlaying the base, you see that it's actually happening. Are we ever going to know what actually happened? Nope. 